Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another service from the Cigar Pulpit. I am the Bishop of the Burn, Nick, and with me today, we have Trey Mac Shipley of Aladino Cigars. How the hell are you doing, Trey Mac? I'm doing all right. How are the good folks out there? How are you doing? I, I, you sound like you're not doing so hot. I sound like shit because, <laughs> as I said on Tuesday's show with Mr. Jonathan, I spent uh, last weekend as um, kind of doctor for my kiddo who uh, he came down with something over the weekend. And, you know, it's what you got to do when the kid's sick. You take care of him, right? Um, but Monday, after I finished recording with Mr. Jonathan, started getting a little tickle, a little tickle in the throat, a little cough, and it's just snowballed from there. So I feel like shit, but the show must go on. I have my Pedialyte right here. Nice. And I want to say right now, um, I am getting absolutely no money for this plug, but I highly endorse the new Dayquil Nyquil combo with honey. Have you had this? No. Oh my God, it's amazing. It tastes so good. It coats because it's got honey in it and everything. And it's like not even a problem. I can't stand most cough syrups or medicines, but this shit's really good. So Dayquil and Nyquil with honey has been a nice addition to my uh, my day. So well, um, I can give a non-sponsored plug. Go for it. Fuck Gator Light. Okay. I know they try to market this stuff as like, oh, you... If you're dehydrated, drink some Gator Light. No, it's terrible. Pedialyte is way better. And it tastes way better. What is that? Some sort of peach bullshit? What do you guys This think? is the strawberry. Oh, the straw the strawberry's solid. There's a, there's a punch. I like the punch. Ooh, punch. And, uh I say this as you know, someone who like halfway parties for a living. Uh you oh. often find yourself dehydrated. And I myself, I'm good for about two of those a week of Pedialyte. Nice, nice. Uh, I've got that one going, and I have two more full ones in the kitchen right now. Just wait. So nice. I'm set. But um, anyway, so because of all that, I haven't had a cigar since the one I smoked with Mr. Jonathan on the last show, and uh, I'm not up for one tonight. So this is going to be a no cigar show. Um, I mean, unless you, you're you having one. No, and that's the thing. That's another thing out there. Anybody listening out there, this is a chance for me to – Show you guys how to not be an asshole. I know, shocking, shocking. But if your buddy is going through a period of time where he can't smoke and you want to smoke in front of him. You can have a cigar if you want. I know I can have a cigar, but that's kind of a dick move. It's a dick move. I appreciate that. In solidarity, I'm going to do what I do in my car. You know, I I got my nicotine pouches. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say drink whiskey. I was going to be like, dude, you probably shouldn't do that in the car. <laughs> no. They no. frown upon that. They do. But I did see an interesting uh, YouTube video recently um, where a guy, uh, he drilled a hole through his, uh, he drilled a hole through his, like, thermos. Uh-huh. Drilled a hole through his uh, cup holder. And then drilled a hole into his exhaust pipe and then ran rubber tubing through all of it, you know, so you seal it all up. And he was saying you could use it if you got piss. For sure. You can just pee in it. You know, you never have to stop your car. And I'm like, yeah, I can think of a few other things people might do with that information. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully they don't mix the two up. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, drinking urine is definitely not. I mean, it's not. It's not bad for you. First time. I mean, it depends on how much urine you drink. Okay. I mean, it's sterile. First time. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to keep drinking your urine. No, no, you can't like, yeah, No, you can't do that. Um, Fuck, this is two episodes in a row. I've talked about this exact topic. (laughs) <laughs> Jonathan and I talked about it on Tuesday. Are you serious? Show. Not even joking. Not oh, even joking. Lord. I'm going to have to watch it. Not even fucking joking. Yeah, mm-hmm. watching it's ideal because he showed me the bottle. It's a fucked up thing. Anyway, so <laughs> um, I asked you on because I do. If I'm under the weather and I'm barely talking, who else 
who can carry the water? Who is a storyteller who can just fucking take the ball and run? And I knew it was you. So you didn't reach out to Joel, apparently. Not yet. No, I reached out to you first. Yeah, it's good. Joel, 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 Joel has turned a lot into going. a wrestling show. Well, yeah, Joel's got a lot going on wrestling wise. And uh, at some point or another, I do need to probably circle out with him just to be just to help him out. But uh, the parishioners aren't paying attention to that. I'll post it in the parishioners group. But uh, please do. Yeah. yeah Frankie Kazarian's going to whoop Joel's ass. <laughs> but like Scotty's going down. Frankie's I'm glad. I'm kind of kind of funny that you, that's the take. It's not like oh he's got this great fight with this big time guy. No 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 no. It's that oh yeah that guy's gonna beat the shit out of him. Yeah, he's got. I want to see him humbled. Humbled. I mean, he was pretty cocky at the Arnold Classic, man, going around saying oh. like I've talked to everybody here. Nobody's willing to take me on. I know. I tried posting a response on Facebook, which Facebook then told me if I do post this, they were going to ban me for a while. It was a little violent. I, I but wrestling is violent. What do you want me to say? I mean, I don't disagree with you. I'm just telling you that you know. But uh, I was trying to get yeah. some heat on Spotlight Scotty. You know. <laughs> um, but you know, Frankie, if you're out there, just seriously beat his ass. I mean, just <laughs> humble my boy. Uh, oh, because he needs it, he absolutely needs it. Uh, oh, that's funny. I guess that's uh, your news in wrestling. Well, I'll go, I'll go one step further, it just popped into my head here. You know, they call Frankie Kazarian, uh, the king of TNA. Wouldn't that be a great moniker to have? No, shit. king of TNA, TNA wrestling is, of course, what it means. But I'm saying, Spotlight Scotty, the king of TNA. That's that's what I'm gonna call him from now on. P and A, huh? And we put the put the P in the A. <laughs> oh my god. So okay. last time. <laughs> yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> so the, I'll try the to last make time. too much. Oh god, this is fucking great. So the last time that you were on with Ken, you teased a very interesting travel story involving your airplane. I believe that was on the way back from the farm, wasn't it? It was, it was. And I've had people reach out and say that they have to hear this story. Right. And so this kind of just worked out well, because I was like, eh, what am I going to do? Oh, I can ask Trey Mac for the travel story. So go for it, buddy. It's what happened on the way back from the farm? Layers. It's got a couple of different layers. I don't know if you want me to tell all. Go layers. for it. Go for it. All right. Talk we'll about whatever go. you want. We'll just tell the whole story. So go for it. You know, Ken and I and the group were down in Honduras and uh, great time. Got to get up at 4 a.m. to get back to Comayaga to fly out, right? Uh -huh. Now, not all of us, of course, had the same flights back to the States. Uh, so it was staggered. And of course, like I'm on the last plane. Me and the guys from London were on the last plane. And I'm like, great. I had to get up at 4 a.m. to get to this airport, which was like a five hour drive. And then I get to sit at the airport for like another five hours before I fly out. Meanwhile, I have to watch all these lucky bastards fly out like three hours ahead of me. Okay. Well, it just so happened that once we got there, uh, their flight was delayed to the point to where they were flying out like 45 minutes before the rest of us. So now they're stuck at the airport all day, too. Okay. Uh, so Ken and his boy Mark, uh, they find their way to the uh, the executive lounge, whatever it is out there, uh, which me and the guys from London could have went to as well. But for whatever reason, they were weird guys and we did weird shit instead. <laughs> um, but the next thing I know, uh, you know, they're drinking these drinks that have uh, orange juice and, and tequila and ice. And Ken keeps bringing them out to me from the lounge <laughs> okay so i'm like oh, whatever so i'm oh, drinking whatever. ken's drinking them we're having a good time because we got nothing to do but kill time in the airport so we drink a bunch of these things and eventually they go about their merry way and uh finally i get on my flight to go back home now i'm already gonna get home at like 11 50 so it's a late night no matter what yeah, it's a long day. You wake up at four, you get home at like, because then I have to drive back home from the airport. So I'm like, I'll get home at like one. 
Okay. Wake up at four, get home at one. Real fun, especially for guys that can't sleep on the airplane. So uh, get on this flight. And we got delayed too. In the we got delayed before we got on our flight, which then meant my connecting flight at Miami was going to be razor thin. Uh oh, because you got to go through immigration. Oh yeah. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm gonna land, and I'm gonna have one, like not even one hour, like less than an hour to get through immigration, and then to my next gate to fly out. That's, That's super not, tight. It's really like you can make it, but you're probably not going to make it. It all depends on immigration. Yeah. So we land and there was a bunch of people that had flown with us that were either flying to uh, Tennessee or Kentucky. And both of us were leaving at the same time. We were all super stressed. And a lot of them were older individuals. Okay. And as soon as we landed, they're all like, hustling well yeah to get to immigration as soon as possible and me and the guy from london um we're like i'm either gonna make it or not i'm not gonna run because yeah it's it doesn't depend on how fast i run it depends on how fast immigration works so i'm like but all these people are just and these old people you know they're shuffling as fast as they can oh yeah oh yeah i'm like yeah i ain't doing that i'm just gonna take my merry time and we get into the immigration line, and of course, every time you're in immigration in Miami, it's massive. And there's, I mean, I'm sweating because you've landed in Miami and it's hot as hell. And so I'm, I'm sweating, even though I was just walking briskly. But these old people, man, they were not, just having, a, not having a good time. Drenching buckets, yeah. And I'll give the airport... They're due. Uh, immigration was working as fast as possible. They were not messing around. Okay. So that was good. Um, we get through immigration and we're like, oh shit, we might actually make our flight. Again, your boy here, I'm going to walk briskly. It's either going to happen or not. Um, but again, several of these old people are doing everything they can. I get to, and no, don't you know, the flight from Miami to both uh, Tennessee and Kentucky is literally the very last. I mean, of course. Yeah. Not only and do you have to get through, but then you have to literally book it from one end of the airport all the way to the other. Yeah. And if you've yeah. ever been to the Miami airport, there's a significant amount of planes that fly that you don't just go through your gate. You then go through a series of mazes outside. <laughs> In the elements. Okay. So that's the case for us. And when we get there, the people on the, you can hear the people on the microphone saying last call for blah, 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 blah. And of course I'm one of them. And so are several of these other older individuals and they're just going as fast as they can. And I'm already, I, I'm sweaty and nasty. And I'm like, let's see if I get there. Yeah. I'm the last one to make it, but I made it. Very last person. Look at you. Sweet. I'm happy. And I'm drenched in sweat. Because now you're outside. It's hot as hell. Yeah. You're standing like cattle. And you're, it's just, you're just drenched. And we get on the plane. And the first thing I notice is it's hotter on the plane. Oh, no. Was outside. There's no air. On oh, the no. At which point, there's also no PA on the plane, okay? No speakers. Oh, no. And we only have two stewardesses on the plane, even though it's full, and they were yelling at us for last call. So everything is not going right. Yeah, I'm like, what the hell is going on? And finally, one of the yeah. stewardesses is running up and down, telling everybody the situation. And she goes, okay, we don't know how long we're going to be here. We can't turn on the PA system or the air until the pilots get here oh shit and the pilots aren't here because guess what they stuck in immigration oh my god so i'm sitting there like pissed off sweaty nasty and i'm like you mean to tell me you were giving me last call when the pilots were stuck the pilots in aren't even fucking here yet yeah you gotta be kidding me. oh my god 
But then we're sitting on this plane with no air on the tarmac, direct sunlight, and I'm just, it's just rolling off of me. I'm just like, oh. yeah. And the stewardesses kicked into gear and they're like, anybody needs water, we got water. Well, we didn't just go through the water, we we drank all their water. Well, of course. So then the stewardess is like, shit, now we don't have water for the flight. And now we got to get that replenished. Yeah. Yeah. We're all like, we need more water. All of us need more water. We're just, and these sweats just rolling off all of us. Oh, my God. So this goes on for about an hour before the pilots finally get there. What airline was this again? This was American. Okay. All right. Okay. So the two pilots and like another one or two stewardesses, I can't remember. Yeah. Get on the flight. And they're apologizing. We're going to get you out of here as soon as possible. Blah, 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 blah. And they did. The pilots didn't fuck around. They pretty much got in there, shut the door, and let's go. Okay. But I'll tell you what. I was miserable. Swamp ass. Yeah. Nasty. Like, still, like, you just can't recover. No. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, man, if I'm feeling this bad, I feel bad for all these older folks that, hustled worse than i did no shit i'm like they must be uh not doing so hot oh no this would be true so the flight it's not a it's not a long flight it's like three hours okay and we're two hours into the flight i got my airpods on and i'm just like not paying attention to anybody i'm just glad that i'm somewhat more hydrated and just getting home yeah. And then I notice a commotion. Let's back it up a little bit. Let's make this story oh, no. oh, let's no. make this story a hundred percent honest. Because there's one person on this flight that I would like to say a big old fuck you to. Okay. There's this woman that was sitting one seat in front and to the right. She's on the right side. Yes. Okay. Okay, and, so across the aisle from you, yeah, but and one the seat two, ahead of you, yeah, and the two of us, um, I'm pretty strategic about when I get my seats because if I'm not going to fly business, if I'm just you know with everybody else, the plebes, yeah, yeah if I'm going to yeah. be a plebe myself, which is about fifty percent of the time anyway, yeah, um, then I wait till the last minute and I just try to find a seat by myself. I don't give a fuck where it's at. Yeah, I'll play the seat game and I'm like, oh, my, if that means the last row, don't care. Don't care. Okay. Okay. This lady must have played the same game. Bigger gal. <laughs> me and her, me and her, her are like the only two that have our own seats. Okay. And for whatever reason, I don't know why. She looks at me and says, Do you mind switching seats? Why? At which point I'm like, well, we both have three seats to ourselves like what no i'm fine right yeah here. and she goes i like that side of the plane better and i'm like too fucking bad you should have bought right. this side of this plane so, so do i like, yeah i'm like i'm not playing your game like you just deal with it we're both lucky oh, in this situation just shut up this yeah. lady's already kind of upset me okay and uh then she asked one of the stewardesses for more water and the stewardess is like, we just got more water. Give it, give us a minute. We'll we'll have it ready. And they bring her the water, and she's upset that there was no ice in the water. Oh, for fuck's sake. So the stewardess takes this very nice, takes it back, puts ice in it, brings it back to her. And then she says, There's too much ice, not enough water. Are you fucking serious? Uh, this woman was on another level. Okay. And as this flight goes on, I'm like, this, I'm gonna, you know, I, this is really tough. I, I don't like, this. and uh, so that happens. But then she finally just shut up and watched her phone, and we're both doing our thing. And then about two hours into the flight, all of a sudden, there's like flashing lights, call lights, and there's all there's commotion. There's yeah. big standing up out of nowhere, and something has happened. And it's it's right in front. It's all the way up front, uh, r the first seat behind first class. So okay. it's 
too far for me to really know what's going on other than something's going on. Okay. But I knew when we were walking in there, it was an elderly, I say elderly, they were 60 plus, a uh, man and wife that sat in those seats because I saw them and, and I knew they were two people that were hustling to get there in time. Yeah. So I knew it had to be one of the two of them. Next thing I know, they come on the PA system and say, you know, is there a doctor available? And I'm like, oh, I've shit. Only, I've only seen this in movies. I didn't know this was real. Yeah. Two guys jump up and they're both like, we're, we're both doctors and they run up up there. And um, it must have been the, the wife or the, the older lady that was having an issue because I saw the husband stand up. So I'm like, all right, something's going on with that lady. And as the commotion grows, the next thing I know is one of the stewardesses runs and right above my head pops this thing open and grabs defibrillators. Oh, shit. And I'm, at that point in time, I'm like, oh, oh this is the real deal. <laughs> yeah, this is bad. Yeah. Now, I, I, it's too far away. Like, I sent you pictures that's zoomed in as far as I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't really see what was going on. That's probably for the best, but yeah. So, okay. So I know yeah. something major's happening. Yeah. And I shit you not. This woman again. Oh God. While this stewardess is running back and forth getting medical supplies and defibrillators and shit. Yeah. Grabs her by the arm and says to her. My mother-in-law is sitting up there. Can you find out if that's my mother-in-law? Oh, for fuck's sake. So stewardess is like, runs, steward, and finally comes back, and the stewardess goes uh, to this woman and says, it is not your mother-in-law. And this fucking woman. Oh, God. Says, oh, I don't give a shit either way then. Oh, my God. And I'm like, Okay. Okay. So it's somebody's like up there literally dying. a fucking defibrillator and dying, dying. And this woman doesn't give a shit. Or perhaps dead, you know, I, for all we know. I mean, yeah. Oh my God. You know, I'm like, this woman, I, I don't like her. <laughs> <laughs> shit. And uh, then they come on the, the PA system and they say, you know, I need everybody to prepare for an emergency landing. We've got a medical issue. We are going to land as soon as humanly possible. And this freaking plane just like nose dives. dives. Oh, fuck. Never experienced this either. And like my ears just like, fucking like, boob. Yeah. And like we never like chilled. I mean, it was like straight down. Son of a bitch. My ears didn't adjust until we landed. I'm like, oh, let's go. Oh, my God. No, no idea where we're landing. Nothing. <laughs> and then this woman happens again. <gasps> Just when I thought she couldn't get any worse. No, no. She grabs the stewardess again. What time are we going to get to Cincinnati? Oh, for fuck's sake. And the stewardess is like, this is an emergency situation. We, we're just dealing with, we're just worried about landing. Yeah. We have no idea. And she says to her, I have somebody waiting for me at the airport. No. And, and I just yelled back at her. I'm like, don't we all? <laughs> yeah. It's an airport. We all have somebody waiting for us. You're not special. Yeah. So I'm like, oh man, like if I could just like, Throw somebody out the window here, you know. And I, and yeah, leave her in fucking BFE nowhere that you yeah. just landed. Yeah. So I also sent you the pictures of uh, like the emergency crew waiting for us on the tarmac. Oh yeah, no, you had like all kinds of red and, and blue lights waiting outside for you. I gotta give them credit. Now again, sadly, I I was too far back. I couldn't see how they did it. Yeah. But we landed, and I still to this day I have no clue where we landed. I'm assuming. Two hours in, it's somewhere in Tennessee or Kentucky or West Virginia. Yeah, mid Midwest somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. But we land, and that emergency crew got on the plane, and I don't know how they got her out. I couldn't see, but they got her off that plane in, like, no time. 
like nice super fast nice because i was sitting there thinking like how are they going to get a stretcher on this bitch and how are they going to get her off of here because it's a tiny spot and i wish i would have seen how they did it but i mean they got her off that plane super fast okay which was i was very impressed i was shocked i thought we were going to spend the whole night there Got her off, and then uh, the pilot's like, sh- straight back up. And it wasn't long. It was only like, I don't know, 45 minutes after that, we were landing in Cincinnati. Okay. So we land in Cincinnati. Now this time, you know, now it's 3 a.m. Okay. Uh, not midnight. No, it's, we're at 3 a.m. here. Yeah. And I'm like, ah. Oh. I woke up at four. I got home at three. So it's like a 24 hour day, practically. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't sleep. Blah. Go home, crawl into bed. And I'm like, I ain't doing shit tomorrow. Yeah. I'm done. Okay. I was wrong. I was wrong. First thing I noticed was uh, I woke up and my phone was dead. Not good. No. Not good. However, I also like got up and my phone next to my computer. And when my phone was next to my computer, everything that was coming to my phone was popping up on my computer. Uh huh. So phone not dead. My like, guy's weird. Screen. Well, you were having phone issues. I know. I've been having phone issues for a while because I'm one of those guys that like I ride this bitch till it breaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had an old iPhone that. You rode right. too hard. As yeah. Husto's wife, Vivian, put it, Trey, you need to get a new phone, not that thing that came over here with Christopher Columbus. <laughs> you said that to me before the trip. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I've been, I've had that phone for like five years. You know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. But I found it perplexing. I'm like, how is my computer getting all this information? But my phone is black screen and it's, Acting like it's dead, not taking a charge. Like, this is making any sense. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I guess I need to go get a new phone. At which point I heard <laughs> down in my belly. <laughs> we covered this in the episode with Ken, yeah. too. That ice fucking haunted you. Yeah. And I'm like, what? What, what is this? Something? Oh, <laughs> you gotta go. Yeah. So I <laughs> 48 hours sleeping by the toilet with this dead phone. Oh, fuck. I'm like, no, I can't reach anybody. Nobody can reach me. Oh, God. I take the chance to walk to the living room to get on my computer. No, because- dude. When I did the fucking sugar free gummy bears, like, you don't take that chance. No. That little five second walk down the hallway could no. literally be the make it or break it moment for your butt. Yes. Yeah. So no, I literally I- done that. I slept two nights right there in the bathroom hallway. Oh, God. Um, yeah. Now, I did not know that the other people that had the same drinks were having the exact same issue. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know this. Oh, wow, I don't know what's wrong with me. Finally, day three comes and I can like move around. And of course, I get to my computer and I'm like, oh man, everybody's wondering if I'm dead. And I'm like, no, here's the situation. you just been, you know, shitting myself for two days. Uh-huh. And uh, my phone is kaput. What do you want me to do? And, uh, oh, fuck. Then they're like, well, you got to get a new phone ASAP. We got to get shit caught up, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, one problem here, folks. I could shit myself at any moment. Here. <laughs> um, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So I end up like going to first I go to Verizon and they look at me and they're like, we've never seen this before. And they're like, you have a zombie phone and your phone is not dead, but it appears to be dead, but it's not dead. It's alive. It's very much alive. And I'm like, well, just give me a new phone and let's and download, put the- it out of its misery yeah, and yeah. fucking let's get a new phone. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, well, the problem is if you do it this way, you're going to lose all your data. Oh shit. I'm like, okay, well that's not good. That's really... No, that that's a big problem. Yeah. And uh there Do you not like... do you not sign up with the iCloud? This is, this is part of the story. Okay, okay. 
So they send me, because Verizon's like, we've never seen this before. So they send me to uh, the Geek Squad. They're like, the geeks might be able to fix this, and then we can get everything off your phone. Okay? Okay. Because, again, and I don't know what was going on, or if it was my problem or a larger problem, which I think it may have been just bad timing. Because, uh, see, the cloud wasn't working at Verizon. Okay. Sign into the cloud. Sign in, nothing there. It won't, it won't, even, I go to the Geek Squad, the cloud wouldn't even boot at the Geek Squad. Huh. And I'm like, oh, and they're like, yeah, this is weird. And I'm like, okay, we're dealing with like two separate weird issues here. This doesn't make any sense. And uh, the Geek Squad is like, well, if we, re- you really have to replace the screen. But if we do that, it's a 50% chance that you're going to lose everything. Fuck. And I'm like, what's that going to cost? They're like, 300 bucks. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, no, my no, God. No, thanks. So then I'm like, I guess I'm just going to go to the Apple store. Now, mind you, not only am I frustrated at each one of these locations, I'm trying not to shit myself. <laughs> That's important. Not easy to do. And then there were no. some close calls. It's important. Close yeah. calls. And then it's like an hour drive to the Apple store. And I'm like, if I shit myself at Apple, I'll never be able to go in there again. And my life revolves around these products. I can't can't Uh, get to Apple. Same thing. We've never seen this before. (laughs) So I'm like, okay, well, like my stuff's on the cloud, right? And they're like, well, the cloud's not pulling up here. And I'm like, well, you're a damn What the hell? I'm losing my shit here. So I'm like, well, I drive back home and I pull up the cloud on my computer. There's everything. Okay, so you've at least got everything there. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, worst case scenario, I just go buy a new phone and I got the cloud here, everything's fine. Sync it off your computer and you're fine. Yeah, so I go do that. Get home. No, it's not transferring. The fuck? No. It's a brand new phone. Brand new phone. Okay. Um. So then I go back to Apple. Mind you, this whole time, still not in. We're not out of the woods. In fact, I still haven't taken a nice log. You still haven't. But we're not, you know, rushing around like. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um. Finally, Apple like brings in this guy from India that's like top dog, top dog. And I end up having to go home, bring them my 25 inch iMac. Yeah. Show them, here's my cloud. I don't know why it's not pulling up at your store, but here's my, it's right in there. Oh, yes, everything's there. And I'm like, well, what, what the fuck do we have to do to get it off here? Yeah. They start fucking with it. And they're like, it's not like, it's not transferring. It's not working. So they bring in this big Indian honcho guy. And I guess this guy fixes everything and just dude's perplexed. This lasted with Apple for three days. Oh my. And then on the third day, this guy tries some crazy shit. And we got all of my Apple. If you had an Apple phone. All of that stuff transferred. We got that, and we got my notes. Okay. okay. And at that point, this Indian dude cheered, and he's like, Trey, we got something. He's, like, he's all happy and shit. And I'm like, yeah, what about what about the rest of it? And he goes, Trey, after three days, I think this is probably all we're going to get. <laughs> I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, but I was like, thank you for getting me what you got so, so like your contacts and everything have you I, like i had like 2500 contacts i got about 60 percent of them or so oh, fuck. but it's been this weird ordeal where i'm like i don't know who i'm missing what i have to do is go on my cloud and like manually yeah are they there are they there oh they're yeah. not there yeah yeah and then be like add that one manually oh, and i'm like oh, so lesson learned here cloud is great doesn't mean it's not perfect. No, no. Wow. I've always, and I think it's the cloud trying to get back at me. Yeah. I've always been anti-cloud. And here you are. 
Yeah, and I'm like, there's things I don't want to, uh, you know, there's a lot of things yeah. that I'm on that cloud. And now yeah. the cloud is like, well, fush you, man. Yeah. So the nice. cloud, um, and uh, but the we're we're getting there slowly but surely. When people text me, I'm like, please tell me who this is. <laughs> and uh, when when in June was that event? Oh, okay, I'll put that back in the calendar. Ah, oh God, your calendar too. Oh yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. Oh no. Great, great for salesmen. Yeah, no shit. Especially when oh. I'm literally booked through up to July now. Like it's. Oh. it's gross that sucks but, but i don't know what happened to the lady um which is something i would like to find out um it was a wild just another day in the life of traveling in this cigar world nice and, uh, okay and I, I do have a uh a phone that is in the 21st century here so there you go so you know i don't like you got that good ignition shit though you you got that going for you that's good so, so I forgot because we didn't do a cigar that uh, had we done a cigar, the official cutting would have been brought to you by Dan the Man Ponder at Riverman Cigar Company in Crestwood, Missouri. And um, like I said, Wait, can I go I like do it? What? Yeah, since I didn't do a cut, you know, it's like I forgot. But uh, guys, if you're looking for Aladino cigars in the St. Louis area, Dan the Man Ponder is the place to go. Swing on by. He's got a big selection of uh, Aladinos, and he's got a nice lounge for you to chill out in, both inside and outside, if it's nice enough. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're not in the St. Louis area, but you still want to partake in what he's got, he does mail orders. So you can give him a call, talk to him or Miss Cindy, and they can send a nice shipment of cigars out to you right away. So it's Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri. And with that, I'm going to take a swig of my Pedia Light. So, yeah. You know. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna be selfish here and be like, go for it. Not only does Dan have everything that you could possibly want right now, he's gonna have okay. other things that you really want real soon. Like so, what? So PCA is just around the corner, and okay. uh, we've got some exciting releases. Uh, th- I'll start uh, with the one that I'm just thankful finally happened, and that's a 60 ring gauge San Andreas Maduro. So uh, that you be smoked out. that on the show the last time you were on, yeah. And Julio we blended it specifically for that size, so you get tons of flavor. Excellent, uh, sixty ring and uh, twelve. Uh, it's twelve fifty MSRP. So <laughs> there you go, ring, San Andreas. That's that's a good price point. Super nice, affordable, big cigar for people. So Dan will soon have those, and then the other is uh really something we've been working on for a while i'm excited about is the fuma noche okay. uh, which translates to uh smoke night and uh packaging is beautiful the cigar is beautiful it's a fuller bodied cigar uh it's it's a nightcap smoke that's what it is like you smoke this and you're you're good it's got a lot of nicotine uh, it's still be- Julio is he likes to balance things out. It's not going to hit you in the face with pepper. It's not going to do that. Very well balanced, but definitely before you smoke that cigar, like I said, it is a nightcap smoke. Okay. And uh, kind of like uh, the picture behind the Aladino cigars, which is uh, uh, an old Havana Nights theme. Uh, this one's more uh, black and white. So we, we changed the theme up to black and white. Uh, and we're going to run that as the marketing campaign. And it's kind of like, you know, it's a night scene. This is a nighttime cigar. Something okay. else hasn't really done before. And uh, Julio did a very, very nice job of it. I'm super pumped. That cigar is coming out at PCA. They will ship uh, during PCA. So they will be in stores in the next couple of weeks. Perfect. So that one's good. And then if I could tease one last thing, sir. Feel free. And I believe you're the first person that officially gets this tease. Ooh, goody, goody. Goody, goody. Goody, goody. I can't tell you much. Okay. Cigar that's never been done before. Okay. Which is hard to say these days. Everything's been done. Okay, okay. This has never been done. It's a true unicorn. It's uh, extremely limited. It has been the tobacco. This is a project that Custo was really spearheading when he was on the farming side 
uh, before actually joining Aladino. Oh, so this so goes back a little while. This goes back to uh, actually technically 2015-ish. Okay. Uh, because this tobacco had been in pilones since uh, 2016. Oh. They were in pilones in 2016. They've been super aged, eight years aged leaf. They weren't rolled until recently, but the leaf has been aged. And uh, like I said, cigar that's not been done. This industry does not have anything like this. Uh, it's its own blend, and it is super exciting. It's also going to be super limited. It will not ship until uh, we're looking at June, possibly. Okay. But we'll be taking orders for them at PCA. Again, extremely limited. So we're going to find out about it at PCA. There will be, I'm sure everybody, we're going to have it on display. I'm sure there'll be plenty of write-ups about it because it is very unique, very beautiful. And uh, again, it's going to be something hard to find. You're going to have to go to people that really support Aladino to find this. And uh, even then, it's going to be hard to get. So pay attention. Hey. Pay attention to Half Wheel. Pay attention to what you hear about PCA because you want this. Uh, again, it's a flavor profile you've never had. You, you want to try it. So All right. Hands on this when it comes out. I wish I could say more, but I can finally at least say this much. And Well, that's good. It's wonderful. There you go. All right. Well, we're looking forward to that. All good stuff that, uh, you know, hopefully um, we'll be able to get uh, at Riverbend Cigar Company. Yeah, no, just, Dan, uh, Dan, Dan just to give out. Dan that extra plug since I am doing it fairly late in the show. But, you know, it's OK. Mix it up every once in a while. So he's not going to have many, but he's going to have some. For sure. All right. Well, let's do this now. It's time for the Billiger Cigars Entertainment Report, brought to you by Billiger. Billiger Cigars, one of the leading cigar and cigarello manufacturers in the world, founded in 1888 and still family-owned and operated. Head over to VilligerCigars.com and check the store locator to find a shop near you that carries them. We guarantee that Billiger Cigars will be a wonderful addition to your humidor and cigar rotation. I hope you have something because uh, I've been going to bed super early every night, so I don't have shit. Okay, so uh, I don't watch as much as most people do, sadly. It's okay. But uh, shameless. I'll, I'll start with the shameless plug. Maybe talk about something next. Uh, if you if you didn't watch the Super Bowl, <laughs> you should watch it again. Oh, my God. And again. <laughs> you times, over there, old Patty Mahomes. He's a I legend. Mean, last time you were on, you said you'd watched it three times. Are you <laughs> like how, how many times have you watched it now? I don't know. I I've, I might have. Okay, might be a part of my day. It's just um, always on in the background. Just yeah, it's just kind of there. Like you got one t one TV on loop. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you haven't watched it, folks, you, you're doing yourself a disservice. If you did watch it live, <sighs> watch it again because we're talking about a Super Bowl that not only went into overtime, it was the last seconds of overtime, and you saw a legend, an absolute stud, and man of <laughs> boy, Patrick Mahomes, lead his team to victory for the third, his third championship. He so, sounds like Kenny Powers for me. He's bounded down. I know, which makes me. <clears throat> I love the video where they compare the two of them. It's, it's so, so funny. funny. So it's funny. So <clears throat> I will say fun for that. There you go. I will say I did listen to um, <clears throat> the uh, Smoking Butts and Tapenash podcast while doing my deliveries yesterday. And uh, I want to give a shout out to those guys because they uh, they just hit a milestone of uh, 5,000 downloads, which, oh, you know funny. what? I mean, they've gone a year. That's impressive in and of itself, and they've hit a milestone of five thousand dollars. That's that's a big deal. So oh, that's congr great! Congrats to those guys. You remember those days? I do, I do. I hit it sooner than they did, but you know whatever. Yeah, but it's the grind. So, you remember the grind, you know. It is the grind. Well, they're only doing one a week. I cheated and went to two. You know, granted, it cost me friendships and all kinds of other shit, but fuck it, I did it for the people. 
So anyway. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, this so is, this is why you get to hear me sound like shit because I do two a week. If I would have only done fucking one a week, I'd been like, "Well, I've dodged that bullet. Don't have to worry about it until next week." But no, 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 no. Oh my god. Anyway, okay, so two more. I'll give you two more. Okay, go for it. Uh, the next one is uh, I've mentioned it before, but I'll go into a little bit more detail. I had this is because of our last show. I was okay. like. I gotta go rewatch Bone Tomahawk. Okay. If you haven't watched Bone Tomahawk and you're a little bit of a different kind of cat, <laughs> I don't know, a parishioner. Yeah. Uh-huh. All are different. Watch Bone Tomahawk. Okay. It's it's not short. I mean, it's it's a longer, it's like a modern western, modern take on westerns. Okay. Uh, but uh, major actors in this movie. And yeah, it kind of lulls you to sleep where you're like, oh, this is just the cut and dry Western. There's not a lot going on. And also, there's no music. I didn't realize this till I watched it the second time because they want you to be kind of lulled to sleep, but also invested in the storyline. Yeah. But it, like an hour and a half goes by before there's any type of music in this movie. Weird. So you're listening to this dull, dry, getting into the characters, and you're like, "Oh my god, this western! It's just good enough for me to keep watching." And then all of a sudden, someone gets hit with an arrow, and then all and it of a sudden, it goes from there. Real weird. Uh-huh. And if you're not accustomed to the term troglodyte, I suggest you get accustomed to troglodytes. Okay. So it's a Western with troglodytes. And when I say it, it takes a turn. Boy, does it take a turn. Okay. I'm talking about some nasty shit. Nasty. <laughs> and it takes a lot for me to say that. I was going to say, for you to say that, Lord only knows. If I'm watching a movie and I'm like, oh, they're not, they're not going to spread his legs. And no, they're not. But they do. Oh, Fuck. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Bone I, I hope you, you didn't hear that because if you didn't no. hear that, that means oh, no. thank God. The, the cough. Oh. The cough button worked. No, I but, quickly potted potted down real quick. I was like, I was like, oh God. <laughs> As I snot everywhere. So, oh. bone tomahawk, <laughs> folks. Watch okay. it. I want. I Nick. I don't think you should watch it now because it might be too much for your respiratory system to handle that last like forty minutes. Okay, good to um, know. When you're healthy again, uh, I if you haven't seen, have you seen it yet? I have not seen it yet. No. Put it on if you are you into like weird cult classic shit? Yeah, I mean, I'm not like big into like super violent like slasher type shit. So I'm getting the vibe. I don't know. It, well, no, it's more three quarters normal movie, and then thirty minutes of like gore that you weren't ready for. See, okay. And it's All not. Right. It's not like Rob Zombie gore. It's more like never thought about that before. Oh, okay. And it's not like over the top where you're like, "That's fake as shit." It's like, yeah, oh, how that would have happened. Oh, <laughs> oh that's, that's not oh. Good. okay. All that's right. Good. Well, so uh, yeah, Bone Tomahawk. Well, it's phenomenal. Bone Tomahawk. All right. I will have to. I will add that to the list. I will add that okay. to the list. And last uh, thing before yes. we and I know you need to go. You're not feeling great. I've tried to yak my brains out. No, you're, you're doing great. Stuff. You're doing great. You're giving the people a show. Damn it! Uh, it's a show, all right. Uh, it's a show. Full kimono. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I didn't wear a hat this time. I'm giving you. I this. know this is like casual tray. Normal yeah. lighting. No sunglasses. Yeah. I mean, exactly. my God. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is not really a movie, but something I want you all to get your brains thinking about here. Oh, and uh, I know some of you still don't listen to my bullshit about the whole moon thing. And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I want you to start thinking about Antarctica. Antarctica. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh yeah. Start with the project uh, high jump. Project High Jump. 
yeah, all you got to do is Google it. It's declassified. It's a real thing. Okay. Start there and then let your brain and be pragmatic, folks. That's the thing we have. We have extremes on both sides and everybody just wants you to jump on one side or jump on the other. That's all people want to do. There's very few of us that are like curious enough to be like, give this a shot. And you're like, okay, this is horseshit, blah, blah, blah. Or it's like, no, wait a minute. Let's let's actually think about this for a little bit. Okay. Really, really, really into the Antarctic mystery. And uh, I would tell your folks to do the same. And perhaps in the future, maybe we could discuss Antarctica and how it's really, really weird. I'm down for that. So Project Hydro, we need to look into that. Start there, because that that you cannot argue with. That is declassified information. You're like, okay, well, obviously something weird is going on in Antarctica. Okay. Because that's... And then to know that there's like 20 other countries as well, and Antarctica is split up amongst them, and even if you go there, you can only go to your little zone, and no one can go to like certain zones in the middle, and it... Hmm. A lot of okay. a lot of weirdness going on, and I've got my own thoughts about some of it, but maybe we're not ready for it tonight. But uh Okay, all right. Okay. Start with Project High Jump. I'm gonna need a cigar for that conversation. Oh yeah. Oh I, yeah. Oh, still yeah. like there's several I go back and I'm like, okay, that part I think is bullshit. Let's go to this next part. I'm like, yeah. Well, there's something there. Okay. 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 And uh yeah, really into that. Now the moon thing, still it's funny, you know, all of a sudden the moon, <laughs> the moon the moon is rusting. I don't know if you knew that. You were mentioning this to me, I think, at some point. It was on CNN. Yeah. Talking about the moon rusting. I'll be damned. I'm like, well, that's weird. Why why would it rust? That's why would it rust? Strange. And then uh, I don't think we really talked about this in the last time either, but uh we landed something on the moon. Yes, yes. Did we discuss a rover? No, did we discuss this? I don't remember if we discussed this or not. How it fell over? Yeah, fell over. Yeah, which like that's weird. Like after all this time, we can't even land something on the moon. Like let alone get we can't even land it on the moon. Like it tipped over and it's unmanned. Well, I'm glad old fucking Neil Armstrong didn't tip over. Like, yeah. but, um, but uh, yeah, it tipped over and then uh, we did get video back and it was better than india's video which if you didn't watch when india landed on the moon recently they had to cgi some of it and india admitted it's because there's no way to get a reliable signal so we had to fill in some things like they were transparent about what they did yeah uh us you know we released the video and of course the first thing people notice is like why is it less resolution now than it was back then and of course nasa and i think this was also on cnn said well it's because now we're using digital you know before we used film and and now it's digital and i'm like wait well wait a minute how did they use film if they were on the fucking moon and broadcasting live yeah well yeah well i'm just telling you what nasa said the reason the reason the definition is different is because this time it was digital (laughs) Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, guys. It's getting okay. weird. Okay. So there's your. Moon oh, All right. All right. Well, we have a moon update. So there I've we go. Probably we've got, what have we got about an hour now? Yeah, we're we're we right about an people, hour. Now. This is what the people want. Look, they want they got hour. a solid show out of you. They got travel stories. They got teases of upcoming cigars from Aladino, and we even talked about the moon. Yeah, in Antarctica. More to come. But you know what we haven't talked about yet? What? My monthly cigars, which is a premium cigar subscription service that you get a box of cigars to your door every month. Come in a variety of sizes. I get through Busto, which is four cigars for 30 bucks. They have the El Presidente, which is eight cigars for 50 bucks. And if you use the offer code Pulpit, P-U-L-P-I-T, you get free shipping on your first box. And while you're there, check out the fucking good coffee, which I'm drinking some right now. It's gone a little cold on me, but it's still okay. And, uh, you know, you get the lounge blend or the daily press. And it's all good. So it's mymonthlycigars.com. 
Old Gervais needs to figure out how to make coffee that hydrates you. See, now that would be nice. You wouldn't need to be white. You would just need fucking. Or at the very least, coffee where like after like an hour or so of me drinking it, I don't immediately have to run to the bathroom and take a giant shit. Uh, that's part of the beauty. Right? That's, that's, like, just, that's just coffee in general. I mean, I, I actually prefer that. Like, I know <laughs> like, you this coffee, like this cigar. I know what's going to happen. Nice. And hope you don't spend two nights there. But uh, Well, yeah, you don't want to spend that long. No, 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 no. Anyway, well, um, I'm on Instagram at the Cigar Pulpit. I'm on Facebook where we have the Pulpit Prisoners group, Twitter slash X, and YouTube where you can watch us. And guys, um, head on over to Eventbrite, that's B-R-I-T-E dot com, and search for Pulpit Fest 2024. If you go to Eventbrite twenty um, dot com and search for that, you can reserve your tickets for Pulpit Fest 2024 down at Ashendale. It's August 23rd through the 25th. Um, tickets are free. I just need a head count. So just head on over there um, and, and sign up for that. And I have posted that link all over the place too, but um, you can do that and do that. So I anyway. signed up already. I signed up. Perfect. First, don't, I mean, don't fuck around. Sign up. No. We need a head count. Let's fucking do this. It's going to be massive. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. It's going to be way better than previous years. It's going to be just amazing. Amazing. Not the previous years have been bad. This year's just going to be way different. You're taking things to a new level, which is what you're supposed to. Precisely. We're amping it up. We're going crazy. You're a grower. (laughs) I'm not falling for that. (laughs) Where can people follow you, Trey Mac? Uh, The best way to do it is just on Instagram, Trey Mac Travels. Uh, that's probably the best. I'm also on X under a whole different thing that I've been doing for, for a while. That's a deep space primate. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. This one I've never said before. This is the, this is for my little side gig, my little side peeps. Uh, but uh, deep space primate. I've decided I'm coming back. I'm coming back on X. I'm re reinvigorating deep space primate. Now it's prime eight, the, the letter eight or the number eight. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The letter eight. What am I talking about? There it is. Yeah. Deep space prime and the number eight. Yeah. Uh, so if you do want to hit me up on Twitter, that I like to get weird over there. I'm okay. Instagram is like, let's talk about cigars, travel, whatever you want. I'll do some cool pictures. Deep space I like this. I like this tweet from. December 26th of 2020. Note to everyone out there. Tinder is crazy lit the morning after Christmas. <laughs> that's, that's kind of how the deep space prime is. Right? Uh, which maybe I bring God, that's back. That's awesome. Maybe I bring back because uh, after taking a calendar year off of online dating, two nights ago, I opened it all back up. Oh, fuck, dude. I'm talking Tinder, Bumble. And you want to know what the weird thing I've learned is that's changed? Something What's that? that? When I got out of the game, this was not a thing yet. What's that? Oh, it's a thing for our age group anyway. You want to get girls that are 30 to 45. Facebook? Yeah. Yup. I'll tell you right now, so far, that has been by far the best platform. When did this happen? It but I will say this, but I will say this. You got to fucking, you got to search through the shit on that one, man. Cause the thing about it, since it's free, the fucking floodgates are open, man. Like you get everything. Chocolate so, that. so like it's, it, you know, it's not narrowed down to people that are willing to pay for it. It's just like everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you got to be going to be careful there. Yeah, but I've, I've been shocked. I mean, a year things have changed in a little over a year. I don't disagree. And uh, it's not the dumpster fire it used to be. No. Now, that said, that's there's not still the, elements of it, but it's not the yeah. age group I typically want to date. <laughs> uh, I saw this one gal a little while, maybe about a week or two back. And, uh, I looked at her and I just immediately was like, Trey Mac would love to meet her. Oh, I know why. 
she had a gigantic forehead. I yeah. mean, it was just like fucking. It was. She looked like a goddamn cone head extra. Dude. Yes. I mean, it was just like. Mm. I'm like, I'm like shit. That's Beldar's daughter. You know. Uh, I mean, like, I immediately was like, "Yep, Trey Max be into her." What, what do they call those? You put on the the ring. The oh yeah, the little fuzzy pleasure ring. ring. Thing. Pleasure yeah, ring. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm only down to do some Fuck. pleasure ring. Oh my god, what did they used to eat and drink? I don't. It was weird. I don't remember. There was like something. I don't know. Whatever beers they would get. They wouldn't take the rings off. They would just take the six pack back. And it, anyway, whatever. I don't but know. Easy. You must snarf all the Garth <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Anyway, no, I saw that. And I was just like, oh, yep. That was on Facebook joke right there. Yeah. You should have sent it to me. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It was. Uh, I think it was Bumble. Yeah, I think it was Bumble. Send me all the foreheads you got, buddy. You know what? If I can figure out a way to do that, I will do that. I think there's ways you can share. I don't know. And I'm, I'm going to give another shout out to here. So we got Ash and Ale coming up for Pulpit Fest. I know it's a ways off, but make your plans now. It's a ways off, but it's coming up super quick. I mean, for fuck's sake, we're already in March. Yeah. And not only that, like the more people we know are going We've got some cool ideas to do some cool shit out there. For sure. We do need a head count to make some of that work. Yep. Or at least like a roundabout number. Yep. So please Let's folks, check like, sign up. Sign up now. Try to try to make your plans. It's going to be a blast. I mean, who doesn't want to be in Florida? It's awesome down there. You know, I haven't checked it. Badass. Checked it. The more I've got to pin, like that dude's about as cool as it gets. <laughs> so uh you'll have a great time um florida's a great time anyway for sure and, uh, yeah definitely go but but that said another little plug here that i haven't really quite filled you in on yet personally okay but uh joel and i will be driving through st louis oh dang uh at the end of april okay okay so number one we should just plan on getting together. I, I would say Joel has never been to Top Shooters. We need to change that. Yeah. And yep. uh, I haven't been to Top Shooters since Girls Were Girls. You know what I mean? I get it. I get it. Uh, it's and, been a minute. Uh, so we should do a show from Top Shooters like April. I mean, I'm rolling through there like like April 22nd through the 25th, something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, we can make it. Oh, yeah, we can make that work. Um, well, we'll talk offline about that. Yeah. Well, but either yeah, way, like we can anybody in the St. Louis area, you want to get weird? Meet us at Top Shooters. Yeah, we'll figure we it out. Up now. We, we can have a little, little live session. You know, pretty much every time I've gone to Top Shooters, something stupid is happening to me. So, weird shit does tend it just follows you in general it so, really does it, there's yeah. nothing i can do about it um no. so it's, it's it's part of my matrix okay there you go we can make it work so all right well guys um sorry no cigars this time but uh it just wasn't gonna happen so but uh you got you got fun stories and that's what counts and and we've forgotten so many of them. There's plenty of them. So hell, I need uh, somebody to go back over all of the episodes you've been on and figure out a list of all the stories you teased and never told, because that is key. Because I know there's a bunch of them. So, sure. and there will be probably more of them. I mean, we're going to be in Vegas in a few days. This is true. Uh, you never know what's going to happen in Vegas. This is true. Um. We'll see. But yeah, no, yeah. And, and parishioners, if I've ever teased something and you got to tell it, put it in the comments. Yeah. Parishioners Let group. the man I'll, know. He'll, he I, will share the stories. There's only a couple of stories that I definitely cannot tell. <laughs> I, the only, there's really, on the top of my head, there's two where I'm like, yeah, those, those will be for private moments. Yeah. But yeah, I mean... And that's the beauty of Pulpit Fest. You get to hear those stories. <laughs> you can hear those stories live at Pulpit Fest. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. all right. 
Trey, thank you so much for taking time out, man. I really do appreciate I'm it. Sorry, you're you're under the weather, and but here's it the, happens. Parishioners, listen. He was under the weather. He didn't want to cancel this show, uh, even though this has not been easy for him. And uh, you need to thank him for that. I mean, a lot of people would just <laughs> out. My man here was like the show. In fact, you wrote the words: "The show must go on." And I'm like, "I'm there." The show must go on. So you got to get guys. There you go. Well, this has been another sermon from the Scar Pulp, and I'm Nick. I'm Trey Mac. Everybody stay safe and stay smoked. I need more Pedialyte. <laughs> I ran out under the show, so I yeah, had to switch you, to the coffee. You drank that, mother. Your coffee's not going to help you, bro. No, no, it's not. Later, guys. <laughs>